on behalf of the Countdown Initiative and our co-organizers who are all here, and we are always uh, very proud of the support that they have been providing over the years, I thank you for joining us and for your commitment to improving health and well-being of children, women, adolescents across the continent, actually beyond the continent, because some of you have been very active beyond Sub-Saharan Africa, beyond Africa. So we are privileged to host representatives from 34 countries. Last year we were 26, this year we are 34. So you see still the move is there, and I would like to thank you all for making the effort to be here in Kenya. First, I greatly appreciate how countries are at the center of this partnership and driving the action. I think Sheikh has made this point as well. The facilitators who are here are just that, facilitators. The drivers of the action are the countries who are leading the work, and the rest of us are here to, to follow and facilitate and support behind your leadership. The second thing I really appreciate is the emphasis on making use of all available data sources to analyze them regularly through a country-led process to update the picture and understanding of coverage and equity along the RMNCH and, excuse me, the RMNCAH and continuum every year based on all available data sources. The third point I really appreciate that I wanted to mention briefly is community. Uh, I think of the Countdown Partnership as more than just a collection of partners working toward one specific objective, uh, but really more of a community. And as I look around the room and see so many uh, colleagues and friends and people working together uh, on an ongoing basis toward a common goal, the common values and vision, uh, that is something that I really, really appreciate. I'm personally grateful to be part of this community, and I love to see this community thrive and grow every year. A, it's the partnerships. The partnerships that has been established over years is just incredible. And you know that it's not only WHO, Afro, we have WAHO now, uh, which has got the intense collaboration with the Countdown. And then we also have uh, GFF, Gavi, UNICEF, all of these institutions partnering with the Countdown, but not just partnering in Geneva, and in Washington DC, but partnering at the country level, which is the most important part. And that Gates Foundation really, really cares about is the African uh, ownership of this network. And that's a very key element of this unique partnership. Within the WHO regional office, improving data systems, we look at it from four pillars. The first one is what are the governance systems that exist for health information system. The second part which we are quite happy about is the systems for data generation, transmission, storage, etc. We know most of our countries seated here are implementing DHIS2, which really is a good framework for us to get the data within the health information system. The third component, which is critical for us, is around the capacities for analysis. And we really thank colleagues and all the partners here who are within the Countdown initiative, because that was one of the components within the region where we are struggling a lot. How do we then translate all the analytic capacities that we have here into tangible action? And how do we make sure that our colleagues within the ministries of health have these capacities that we uh, that we have here. So the, the, the fourth component that is important for us is around components for data analysis and use. It is good to have good publications, good infographics, good data. But if this does not translate to actual tangible actions, then we are struggling. Routine data is no longer a nice to have. It's a lifeline. I think many colleagues have mentioned that what you do not measure, what you do not count, or what you do not measure,
cannot be achieved. It's a foundational for effective primary health care, helping us identify who is being left behind, where gaps exist, and how we can deploy limited resources for the greater impact. The strong routine data systems are essential for accelerating progress towards achieving SDG 3 and UHC goals, particularly in our context in Africa, where PHC is our best bet for reaching the most vulnerable. UNICEF is very much committed to supporting countries, all of you and all other countries that are not here with us today, in this journey. And I'm sure many of you already have heard of our initiative that's called the AHEAD Initiative, which is designed to help countries transform routine data into actionable insights that inform planning, budgeting, and service delivery as well. But this can only succeed if it's embedded within the national priorities through our acceleration plans, through our national health strategies, and all the different continental or sub-regional plans that do exist as well. We also recognize that perfection cannot be the starting point. We must make, we must work with data. We must work with the data that we have today, however imperfect. To improve health systems and strengthen the data, we will rely on tomorrow. So let us make these next few days count. Let us focus on the practical, on improving the data quality, supporting subnational systems and the district level that you use, and ensuring that routine data becomes central to how we lead progress for women, children, and communities across the continent. So thank you so much, colleagues. We highly appreciate you inviting us, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you so much. Il est heureux de souligner dans ce contexte que nous avons effectivement une collaboration avec Countdown qui remonte déjà à 2017, donc qui date déjà de près de 8 ans. Je dois dire qu'au titre de cette collaboration, un certain nombre de résultats ont, ont été atteints qu'il faut saluer. La situation sanitaire 2023 SRM Nya, la situation sanitaire 2024 des ressources humaines, les rapports ont été produits. Plus récemment, euh, la collaboration porte sur la production du profil sanitaire 2024 des pays de la CDAO et l'OS est bien évidemment heureuse de prendre en charge la participation des ressortissants de cinq pays pour cette réunion conformément à ses engagements.